This is the A6X2 from Supernote, and it's absolutely fantastic. I've been using it at work for over three months now. And well, one thing it could maybe do with is a fingerprint reader that would let you unlock it without putting in the pin. But then notebooks didn't need pins anyway, did they? There's lots to like about this, and this is one of the best devices out there for note taking. If you are someone who likes to write with real stationery and likes to write really nice and neat handwriting, then this is going to be the place for you. I'm going to take you through everything that I know about the A6X2 and share all my experience from buying the device through to where I am now as an experienced user of it. I put a lot of time and effort into making sure my videos look as good as possible and sound as good as possible. So consider streaming this up to your big 4K TV on the wall and sitting back and relaxing and learning everything there is to know about the Supernote A6X2. I really want to start by thinking about where is the Supernote ecosystem and where are the Supernote devices heading right now and they're going towards focus. They are really geared towards focus. There, for instance, they've added, well, two apps so far, but I imagine they'll probably add a few apps in the future. They have added the ability for you to sideload APK files. So that's essentially installing an app in a bit more of an old fashioned way by getting an install file and putting it on the machine and unpacking it yourself. I think it's a considered decision from Supernote not just to go ahead and put the Google Play Store here on the device because not all apps work brilliantly on Ian. And so if it appeals to you to put apps onto the device, you can, but you should carefully consider which apps are gonna work well for you here and not expect it to become your be all and end all for all different apps that you might want to use on, for instance, a normal tablet or a phone. I can see them bringing more carefully selected apps to their little app store in the future though. Which ones would you like to see? I'd love to hear that in the comments and I'm sure Supernote would as well. Perhaps a maths app, one that could actually read what you write with the pen and do the sums in that way. Or maybe a reading aggregator like Readwise. And I know Readwise are optimizing their app for e-ink as well. But also where are Supernote headed as a company? Well, it's really about their whole ethos, really. They plan in the open. They are really responsive to comments on the community on social media, especially Reddit is the one where you'll often see a response, an official response from a Supernote person. And they're also making sure they're collaborating with people like me, Pixel Leaves, Organising for Change, and of course, Brandon and Voyer. And there's many more people that they're organising to bring you detailed use cases and bring you looks at how these apps are fitting into real world workflows. And it's lovely to see Supernote celebrating what other people are doing with their carefully designed devices. And so you can understand why I'm really excited by this device and why I was really excited to get this unboxed. If you're considering buying one or you're waiting for it to arrive right now, you're going to be so excited. And this is just such a desirable device. It's such an attractive device, but try not to get too hyped about just the way it looks and feels because that's a way to set up disappointment. <laughs> and you can kind of see that in the first impressions that I get. Many people are finding that their first impressions of writing with this pen on this screen is a little bit unsure. And then they find that after just a few days of using it, they fall in love with the screen feel and the handwriting feel. So let's see what those first impressions are like. So is this the new digital analog? It's here, I'm pretty excited. Supernote have sent this out. I wanna talk about Supernote as a company, first of all. They've sent this out for review. This release is not a surprise to any of us. It's a company which develops in the open. Supernote is a company that develops in collaboration with their community. And if you want to be a part of that community, it's worth the investment. It's a very nicely packaged thing. Isn't it? It's like a little set of shelves, isn't it? And they've sent me, I believe this is the Crystal Edition. It's really exciting. <laughs> Supernote, a company that back their product, who've sent this product out for review with no strings attached, with nothing to sign, with no expectation, no please include this. Nothing more really than uh, we hope you enjoy getting to know your new device and we look forward to the content you might make featuring it. And a tool for removing the back, which is quite good because I was wondering if I would have one of those. Of course, one feature of this is that it has a removable battery. Also, the SD card slot is within that back. So activate your Supernote, power on and follow the instructions. Quick start. That is really nice. I've seen the pictures, but I wasn't really ready for how much that I like this design. Little exposed magnets here for the folio. The battery is 
this one I believe. And this is essentially the system. Your SD card slot can go in here. Charger at the top, power button here. And do not remove the film attached to the screen because it's a screen protector, but it's also the reason why it feels like paper. And they give you a USB-C cable, which I'm gonna use because it has a nice design to allow you to connect it and it fit nicely to the side of the device. Cool, put it back in this little shelving unit. Super note pen. Pen is mightier than the sword. And I had no idea who said that. Edward Bulwer Lytton. Just look him up. Former Secretary of State for the Colonies of the United Kingdom. Here we are, 1803 to 1873. English writer and politician. So the pen's stored like that, with almost like hair bubbles gripping it down. It's very nice, it's kind of a creamy color. I wasn't really expecting that kind of color. I don't know whether it kind of matches the color of the device very much, but there we are. Go for the US server, and in English, connect it to the... I'll just say it's funny, once again, going back from a felt nib with an ordinary screen to this ceramic nib with the restorative screen. It's almost like you feel you have to be a bit precious. You don't have to be precious with it at all. Choose if you're right-handed or left-handed. Get to the shortcut, so the sidebar menu as usual. Refresh as usual, but then A6X2, meaning two sliders, as well as a lot of other things. Quick page turning, so if you hold down and then move up and down, you can scan three pages that way. Cool. Activate the region eraser is now on the side here, so you don't put two fingers on the screen, you put two fingers on the sidebar. Cool. And incidentally, if you're left-handed, then these are all reversed. It takes you through the basics here. It's showing me how to create a standard note this first time, rather than a real-time recognition note. Take me through all the things. Okay, why not? Needlepoint pen, ink pen, marker, regular eraser, region eraser, and lassie. Cool. So download to get the pages back. Double tap on the screen to get rid of this toolbar. Press and hold to move it. Okay, for a floating toolbar. Drag it to the bottom or the top to stick it somewhere. Shorten the toolbar, lengthen the toolbar, I suppose, to pop it back up there. Cool, that's the first start tour. So this is my first. Hmm. The free right two is a lot grippier than the previous one. It's very bumpy, very rough like paper. Interesting. I think that might take some getting used to. We'll see, I'm sure we'll get used to it. The ink pen was the one that I've been mostly using on Supernotes. So, so far we haven't had much of a change, but I'm going to let it update. And whilst we do that, let's have a look at the folio case. Secret to happiness is freedom, and the secret to freedom is courage. I mean, just love this company. Their accessories have always been a strong point with the Supernote system. And I like the clicky pen because it means that if you drop it, you're unlikely to damage the nib. Supernotes use ceramic nibs. And what that means is that they should never need replacing. But the only reason why they might need replacing is if you were to drop one right on the end of its nib. So just remember to click it when you leave it on a desk. So if it rolls off, for instance, you don't drop it right on that ceramic nib. It's very different to all other Wacom EMR pen nibs. It's the same technology, but it's different to all the others. Just a really quick comparison with the other Supernote. This is the A5X1. You can see, I hope, that the actual device is thinner. The A6X2. I haven't got the A6X on hand right now. It's my wife's. I'd be really interested to know what she makes of the difference between the two devices, because she uses that quite a lot. And I have the Heart of Metal 2 pen here, which of course you can buy, and of course would slip in very nicely into this package as well. So don't be shy of if you either have one already or you fancy a more premium pen feel, then do go straight up for the Heart of Metal 2 pen as well. They used to be attached by like a rail, and now they're magnetic. And of course you could not take the back off to access the battery. Just to see the difference in thickness, the newer device is that little bit thinner. It's great. It's got a really like retro-ish feel. It's got almost the feeling of a cassette, that kind of plastic, if you know what I mean. Now I'm really tempted to get the back off it. Now looking at it, what I was expecting was that the two devices, the white edition and the crystal edition, the only difference was the back. But the white case is definitely clip on and clip off. Whereas this case is definitely only attachable by screws. What I thought they were going for, you could buy one device and then update and upgrade different backs for it as you go. I thought that was really smart, but watching the video now about the ordinary white version replacement battery, it's definitely a clip on, clip off case. And this crystal edition is only attached by screws. So that's not what I was thinking it was going to be. Do I really need to take the back off? Well, I do want to take the back off, but I probably don't have time right now to do 14 screws and back again. So I'll save that for a full review. I'm going to need to get to know the new gestures. So just hold down with one and slide. One page up is a short distance. Multiple pages is a longer distance. Let's it update now. 
The reason why I'm so excited about this update is that Supernote, they seem to have been the first ones to give me what I've been wanting, which is a dedicated drawing app, and they call it Atelier. So how do I get there? There we are. So it's a whole separate app. It's the second app in the Supernote app store. I was wondering when they were going to put something other than just the Kindle there. And one criticism that I had of drawing here was that actually the screen feel didn't suit it because this kind of pen and paper like screen feel is not as suitable as the more like pencil and paper screen feel of most Wacom EMR nibs with most textured screens. Now they've got the textured screen, Let's see whether there's a big difference there in terms of how much I enjoy drawing on it. You could have drawn on the old ones, of course, and I'm pretty sure that Atelier update will be on here as well. Seems they haven't come out with that update yet on this device. Yeah, see just the Kindle app there. The previous screen feel, there's no texture, it's a very smooth thing. It's still indents slightly, so it's like writing on a bed of paper. But this screen feel definitely has a more grippy texture. Let's just see what other options there are. So the white edition is $300 at the minute, and the crystal edition is just $30 more. So if you like that kind of retro feel and seeing the innards, then it's worth it, I think. I wonder whether, and I hope really, that you'll be able to get the option of different backs for either the white or this crystal edition in the future. But this thing has a fun edition. Any ghosting is very quick change very quick swipe up to get rid of any of that push up standard pen is sixty dollars basically fifty nine dollars fifty nine well dollars it is isn't it you can get the lamy safari twin pen or the lamy mr pen as well and they only have the vegan white leather folio at just at this time which is seventy dollars sixty nine actually so for this package three hundred and twenty nine four hundred and sixty less three four hundred and fifty seven dollars does this indicate we might get different colors in the future? Really, we've got different shades of gray. All the different types of pencil. No tilt, it seems, though. I just presumed they would have put tilt on. So how do I make it thicker? Although I have layers, I don't think I have layer blending, which is something that is quite essential for a drawing app. Pressure-sensitive marker. That's very nice. Little ink brush thing. You've even got different types of eraser. I mean, it does go far, this, doesn't it? So I'm looking forward to where this is going. I don't think it's quite everything to everyone yet, but of course I am going to go and I'm gonna sit and have a draw with this now because this is the new exciting feature. And we'll see how it goes. That's my unboxing and my very first impressions of the Supernote Nomad. This is a device for travel. The A6 was always about travel and the Nomad, as they're calling it, the A6X2 Nomad is clearly a nod to this being the device they think you want if you are a digital nomad. Incidentally, I think initially the screen's gonna be quite grippy, but over time it's gonna get almost like a, it's not nice to say, but like a layer of grease from your palm. And that's gonna make it actually a really pleasant texture. I can already feel in the very short amount of time that I'm using it, it's a bit more slippy in this region here than it is up here. So as we kind of get that kind of sheen of kind of slightly oily substances from our skin on it, actually that overly grippiness at the minute is going to actually relax into a really nice screen feel, I can tell. So cool. Let's see where the journey goes. This could be the new digital analog. And I really think that after a short amount of time, you'll find things that you really love about the Supernote A6X2 Nomad. And well, here are seven things that I really love about it. Here are seven great things about the Supernote A6X2. The design and build. This is the crystal edition. The back shows these mirror finish modules. It's slim and the magnets are tucked right up here, the very top and the very bottom, where they can't affect the handwriting. So you get straight lines right to the edge. The crystal back means that you just see this slim white band of the interior, which makes it appear slimmer. In your hand, it feels warm to the touch, as opposed to the aluminium design of other devices. It's a masterpiece of aesthetic tech. But it's not just design of the hardware, which had all that love poured into it. It's also the design of the software. I love the two finger page turn. Just means that you get no accidental page turns. I love the two finger gesture for erase on the side rail here, or the two finger on the screen for select. There's just loads of well thought out touches like that that you'll fall in love with as you get to know the platform. The accessories. The A6X2 at launch has started off with two options for folio cases. Both vegan leather, this one white, and another in dark blue. At the launch of the A6X2 they brought out this new push-up pen. 
This is the new standard Superno pen. But I personally can't see past the Heart of Metal 2 pen. They are the most premium feeling styluses available. When they say elegant productivity, they mean it's a device with a feel of that notebook that you loved when you were traveling in your 20s. Digital nomads, digital minimalists, you'll feel right at home here. This is currently the best blend of digital and analog. The screen feel. This is the newest Wacom screen layer. It's called the Feelrite 2. It retains that pen-like quality of the first generation of Feelrite screen, but it adds a very organic friction feeling. It feels great with the pen, and it also feels great with your fingers. You can perhaps just see that texture of the screen that gives you the friction. The ceramic nibs, they push in like you're writing with your best ballpoint on 150 GSM paper. It invites you to write neatly and to enjoy the flow of the digital ink from your pen. The low latency. And that feeling of flow is improved by the super low latency of the screen. Clearly, the updated internals have allowed Ratter to close the gap even further between the pen touching the screen and a mark appearing. It's amazing. Most of the time, you'll trick yourself that you're actually writing in ink. I love the way the slight indent of the screen catches the light, almost like wet ink from your rollable pen. Drawing. Superno, the first e ink company to give us a dedicated drawing app. I'm loving this right now. Okay, I did want a tilt sensitive pencil for rendering large areas and I wanted layer blending options, but I'll forgive it. As we now have the most comprehensive set of drawing tools, I can work through a drawing in the same way that I would with real pencils, starting from hard to make light marks through to softer, darker lines for high contrast and deep tones. And then we have lovely ink type brushes and a spray can with interesting textures for filling in areas with darker tones. The Notes app. The standouts of the Notes app are being able to make your own table of contents. And the real-time handwriting recognition. Make a mistake, just jump back and reprint it and it should get it the second time around. All e ink tablets should work their handwriting recognition in this way, with real-time recognition. And number seven, it's user repairable. By 2027, all tech sold in the EU will have to have a minimum of an easily user replaceable battery. Superno are well ahead of the curve here. And you can open the back of this just with 18 screws and they give you a tool in the box to be able to do this and you can replace that whole battery module. They straight away embrace the idea that devices should be modular to allow them to be repairable and upgradable. For example, you've also got space in here for an SD card and that's gonna limit electronic waste. And we're all wondering, what do these little pogo pins here do? One of the apps that they brought was of course the drawing app. They called it Atelier and they've given us real pencil tools. So here is the drawing workflow that I've gone through several times. I had been asking for a dedicated drawing app on e-ink devices and well, Supernote, they were the ones to do it. I didn't used to really love drawing on the Supernote platform, but now, has it actually caught up with the best e-ink tablets for drawing? It has fast become one of my favorite places for drawing full stop, not only my favorite digital sketchbook. And honestly, it was kind of all I could do not just to skip filming this video and take it out and sit under the tree and draw somewhere really. It's because they've added this new Atelier app. And I'm gonna give you a bit of an overview of it today. One reason I didn't used to love drawing on the Supernote was because of the pen and screen feel. It does feel more like a tablet which is designed for writing. One thing that's really Really nice about it is that they've actually managed to put the magnets for the cases way off at the top and the bottom so you do get clean strokes all the way across the page and the same cannot be said for other devices that have a magnetic case. I'm planning on releasing some of these drawings as little screensavers that you can actually buy or get off me in some other way. <laughs> so let me know what you think of that. This is a drawing of a carpenter, one of the early things that Van Gogh will have drawn. One thing it is missing is it is missing tilt in the drawing app. So although Atelier, the app has much improved things, it's still missing some of those features that they could bring in but it does now have the best set of brush tools that you can actually get. So the screen feel wasn't great for drawing and also the pen tools weren't great for drawing, but now they've added a whole range of different pen tools. So I'm gonna show them to you in this video and talk you through the way that I made those drawings and how I've used Atelier. And as you'll see, that tilt isn't such a big miss after all. So going back to our carpenter, the way that I've made this drawing is by using the layers. And so I'm gonna run through the different layers that I've used. First of all, I drew in one of the lighter pencils. I think I actually used the hard pencil first. So you've got all these different range of pencils that you'd be used to. I started with one of the harder ones and worked up through to probably a 4B on this layer. And I've just sort of sketched out the thing. Then I've switched to a new layer and I've added some tone. And the tone I've used has been with the spray can tool. You've got two options for the spray can tool. Style one, I think is a bit bigger than I think I need it for most of my drawings. 
And then lastly, I've added some really dark pencil lines on top. So if I just show you those pencil lines on their own, you can see there, that's the darkest pencil that you can use. And then my pen is uh, the marker pen, lastly. So that's great. It is great to have the layers, but it isn't the only ink tablet to have layers. The Remarkable 2 has layers and so do books devices. What I would really like to see someone bring is actual layer blending options. So where you can actually change the opacity and change how one layer blends with the layer beneath it. That would be really useful in terms of making finished artistic products. So let's go through the different pen tools options. So first is the pencil, and they are pressure sensitive, so I'll just try and write with them here. This is the 4H pencil. You see that is a very light pencil, hardly you to see on the video, I'm sure. And just getting progressively harder, which is just giving you a darker tone. And then HP pencil is the ones that you'll be used to. If you've ever used a pencil, you've almost certainly used an HB. The darker ones are the ones that we use in more artistic sketching, and the harder ones are the ones that we might use in graphical drawings like architecture drawings. You must use dark pencil to get a full range of tones. So in realistic pencil drawings, it's really important that you do work up to and including the darkest pencils that you can get. Oh, and incidentally, the gesture erase doesn't work in the Atelier. I don't know if there's a way to turn that on. But you do have a whole bunch of different eraser types, which is very nice. So that's the pencils. Then you get some ink pens and they've given this, this is the hatching ink pen, just a very narrow pen. Very common way to build up tone. The thin ink pen, that's quite nice. The medium, the slow one there. So this is giving you a nice sort of wet ink kind of look and thick, which is exactly what it says it is. So a nice range of different pencils and pens. Then the markers themselves, you've got the regular marker. Seems to be all one thickness. No, it does have a different thickness. Quite uniform, really. Pressure sensitive marker. And lastly, the pixel block, which just seems to be a constant thickness, no matter what. Slightly rounded edges though. Probably that one will be my least used ever. And then what is really nice actually, and what I'm really getting into is these kind of spatter spray textures. And what's nice about those is that you do have all different colors in those. And so you can change the darkness, not just by going over areas several times, but you can choose to shade in in very light tones just to give a bit of subtle texture and a subtle gradient of tone. So there's lots of good options there. I almost always am using the Style 2, which is the thinner one, although you could certainly cover a good area with the Style 1. So you can get darker by going over certain areas, or you can use the darker tones. There's just a nice sort of sort of wet, almost ink kind of spatter look to that. It gives a good texture, which I think has actually made my drawings really nice. And I think it's one of the things that I've been really enjoying about Atelier. Now you can, in all of the markers, use the colors, as you can in the pens as well. The ink pens or the markers do use the same set of colors. Let's put them back on black because I'm most likely to use those, to be honest, to give those darkest tones on the very top of my drawings. And the pencil, I doubt the pencil will change with color, but maybe it will. Yeah, it does appear to. Fine. So actually, I don't know why you'd ever want to, incidentally, because having an 8B <laughs> lighter tone pencil is not really realistic. Not something that I will ever use, I think, with pens. I'll just be leaving them on dark and using the different softness to give me the tone range. So the nice thing is that if you're at all used to using real artistic mediums, if you're at all used to using real pens and pencils, I think you're going to find something in here that you're going to really get along with and it's going to be a really natural conversion straight from those into using this device. It's great. So as I said at the top of the video, I think maybe that the Supernote ceramic nib is not really the best for drawing. So I did try some alternatives actually, and you can see in this video, I've been using the Remarkable marker, which is a really nice drawing marker. It's got much more of a pencil-like feel. It's not quite as scratchy as the ceramic nib. And also the books markers are very nice as well. But I think I'm right in saying that these use exactly the same nibs anyway, which are the Wacom felt feel nibs. 
So you're not gonna get much of a difference in terms of the actual screen feel with either of those. So you might choose to actually use a different marker other than the Super Note 1 itself. The last one I thought might work quite nicely would be the Stadler Digital Norris Jumbo, although these are my least favorite nibs of all of the nibs that you can get, because they are quite soft. I mean, they're cool looking styluses, but not my favorite nib, and I think that's what matters really to give you that drawing feel. see the pinch to zoom is not the most responsive thing in the world. So once again with this boy with a spade, another Van Gogh drawing, I started with the hardest pencils, just worked up through from so probably 2H through HB, probably to 2B here. Then the spray can tone, you can see there just the darker areas of the image and the darker pencil lines, some really dark spray can tone there. So I've actually used the lighter spray can tone on the lower layer and then the darker spray can tone on the top. And then finally some pen marks to really bring the tone and to really bring the outline in. And I think that looks really, really good. So give it a go yourself. Have a go working up through those layers and working through those tools. That's the way I suggest to do it. It is really great to draw on. Personally, now I can't wait for a full-size A4 Super Note, or even just to have this on the A5 side. It is coming to the A5X, and it will be there, of course, on the A5X2 when that is out. So that's really exciting to be able to draw on those larger sizes with these excellent tools that they've made. What I would suggest for Super Note is that they actually make their own drawing-centered stylus, maybe with the tagline, for those who draw, <laughs> that would fit in really well on it. This pen would be for those who write. So right now, I think the choice for most people is between Supernote and books. And it isn't just a simpler choice as between black and white and color. It's definitely more of a choice about who you are and what you're expecting from your e-ink tablet. I try to really focus in on workflows and my experiences using these devices for work in my reviews. So let's see my comparison between the A6X2 and the books tab mini C. The A6X2 has been one of the most exciting releases and there's more coming from Supernote in this year. And the Tab Mini C is here representing books. It was released about halfway through last year. It's about six months old now. It's still a really excellent tablet. And for a lot of people, this will be the most versatile and the most useful device. But for a lot of people, this will be the device that they want. And the Tab Mini C is here to represent books and this will be the first of probably some quite epic battles between these two devices. The A6X2 is at this point representing all of Supernote. So you could see this as being well, the books platform versus the Supernote platform and where they're headed. This Tab Mini C is representing the best of books because it essentially has the same functionality as the Note F3C and the Tab Ultra C Pro. And this is representing all of Supernote because hopefully we'll have an A5X2 later on, the larger size device, and also we hope an A4X2 as well, which will be as large as a piece of printer paper. That would be really exciting. So it's kind of like, where are they both now and where are they headed? And personally, I think that we're looking at the two gold standards here. We're looking at the gold standard e-ink notebook replacement and we're looking at the gold stank e-ink iPad replacement. They both have e-ink screens, but that's almost where the similarity ends. Okay, well, they both use the Wacom EMR standard of stylus technology. And in my opinion, that is the gold standard for digital styluses. It makes your writing look neat and it does make the devices a pleasure to draw on. Although you can use the stylus from books on the Supernote, I probably wouldn't recommend using the Supernote on the books because it does have the ceramic nib, which could scratch this screen here. But the Wacom EMR is very, very fast and it's very, very accurate and it doesn't need charge. A bit of a technical comparison now, the Tab Mini C is heavier and also the battery life is not gonna last you nearly as long. The Supernote is quite considerably lighter. It's also thinner as well. The books does have a front light, which you really do need on a color ink screen as the background color is so dark. You can probably see that even with that front light on about 50%, it's still looking a little bit darker than the screen with no front light at all. The color ink screen does need lots of light to get the kind of 
muted ink colors to pop. Although as with all the ink, it does look its best when you find some good natural ambient light and full sun, for instance. And one problem with that is that the light is another consumer of your already precious battery with books. Supernote have left out that front light on purpose, and that keeps the top layer of the screen as close as possible to the e-ink beneath it itself. And that adds to the sensation of it being like writing on real paper. Really, as I write, you see it almost kind of catch the light. And if you look closely in at the side of the books device, you can see there's a slight shadow because that is actually the space it needs to have those front lights firing in from the side of the screen and then reflected down and reflected back up off the ink into your eyes. So there is a trade-off for sure for having that front light. Supernote does have a more pen and paper-like screen feel. The Books Tab Mini has a smoother screen protector on it, even compared to the Note F3C for instance. It does give better clarity but it feels less like paper. Let's have a look now in a notepad and see if there's any noticeable difference in what we call the pen latency, which is the time it takes between you actually making the stroke and the ink actually appearing on the screen. Often this is called the pen response or the screen response. It is lightning quick. So I want to say it feels like the, the Super Note is slightly faster now, but it is near enough to make no difference to your everyday use of the device at all. I'm pretty sure I'd need to slow that down to more than a hundredth of a second to really see the difference there. Another difference is that there's no expandable storage on the Tab Mini C, although there are on other books devices. You do have plenty of storage though with a total of 64 gigabytes, which should be fine for most e-ink users. Should you want to carry a massive library around with you, the Supernote does now have an expandable TF card slot or micro SD card slot, which can handle up to two terabytes. Also, you can replace the battery in the Supernote should two years down the line, this become not very efficient anymore. You can't do that with the Tab Mini C. So really, with that expandable storage and with the replaceable battery, you could be reading on this device for the rest of your life. Now also the case being magnetic directly behind does cause some problems here on the Tab Mini C. If I just take a blank page and draw a few lines. It is reasonably well controlled, but you can maybe just see that there are some issues in some areas of that screen where you've got these slight wobbles just here, for instance, and just here and down the bottom here as well. I think there is a slight wobble up here as well. Yeah. Whereas on the Supernote, they've actually decided to put the magnets on the chin and the forehead of the device so that they are well out of the way of the screen. When I now draw a line straight across, you can see there's hardly any wobble, if any at all. It's excellent. This is just another indication of the way that Supernet have thought about making your writing experience as pleasurable with as few disruptions, as few niggles as possible. Now, I personally think that Supernote is the more attractive design, although of course that's very subjective. And I hope they carry on this idea of modularity to give us options of different backs, maybe integrated cases. You can have a case that doesn't need to be held on by magnets, it's actually screwed onto the back of the device, or other possible add-ons which would allow you to refresh the device aesthetically and maybe to make some excellent and useful accessories. For instance, they have pogo pins, and I asked them if there was any word about the presence of those pogo pins, and they just said, well, it's a possible thing in the future that perhaps there might be a dedicated keyboard case, perhaps there might be other accessories as well which could talk to the device with those pogo pins. They're also releasing the specifications of that, so you could actually make your own in 3D printed add-ons where you could work a case with the same drill holes. And they're also intending to let us buy these magnets so we could make our own cases as well. So there's loads of great things that you can really make this device your own. There are two versions of the A6X2. This is the crystal edition, which is held on by screws. And then there's a white version, which is held on by clips. So I would suggest if you wanted to mod this in the future, you should be going for the crystal version and they aren't interchangeable. And Supernote do make really excellent accessories. 
there is nothing wrong with the way that the Brooks device looks. To get this into an already existing kind of mold, they've just added a bigger battery by making the back of it kind of bulge out a little bit. And that's noticeable, you are aware of that. It's making the device heavier and it's making just that little bit less sleek than the previous kind of this size and this form factor of device. The cases are absolutely fine, but they've got that feeling of inexpensive fake leather. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's not the cheapest feeling thing I've ever felt, but it isn't the premium option that the Supernote case is. Supernote make excellent accessories. Now to compare their price and their value, well, they're both similarly priced. You're looking at about 450 pounds, depending on the configuration you go with. Although it's possible to buy just the Supernote device, for only 300 pounds. And then you could perhaps get a third party stylus and the cheapest of those are gonna be about 30 pounds. So that's the cheapest way to start using that device. The book's always ships with the pen and pretty much you're gonna to want to look to buy that in a bundle with the case. It's not really that much cheaper to buy without the case anyway. But they're both very different value propositions. Books have made an Android device which just happens to have an e-ink screen. So you get the benefits of eye comfort and that great direct sunlight viewing experience. Whereas Supernote have made a device which slips into your professional world as your planner and your notebook. Both are very compelling, but you have to decide which of those uses is truly going to give you a high enough value for that high price point. Now, talking about the apps, both have excellent native reading apps. They both have great digest features or annotation features. For instance, I can highlight a whole area of text with a simple gesture here on the tab Mini C. I can even color code that highlight and then that will be in my table of contents along with any annotations I might choose to make within that highlight. Just using these parentheses on the Supernote puts a piece of text straight into your digest and then appears here in your digest again again along with any notes that you might have chosen to add on that page as well. Both have really great reading views and I like now they've added automatic rotate so you can very quickly make it a comfortable size to read and books have their article mode which means that it will scroll through the device moving down the columns of text like so. And of course it also has auto rotate in just the same way to give you a large enough piece of text to read. You can read a wide range of different formats on the Supernote and on the books of course, but the only third party app that you can actually use to read here on the Supernote is Kindle and there's nothing wrong with that. That's if I was just to choose one, that's where I'd want to read and it does work perfectly fine. Whereas books, you can feel free to download any reading app that you like. I'm enjoying this Santan Tango so far, but it's weird that there's no paragraphs in it at all. You can maybe see there that here's where the GPU, the graphics processing unit in the tab menu see really pulls it away. The Supernote for a lot of uses, like any Android apps, you can see the actual animation here on this side and you just get this kind of weird gobbled stuttering effect here on the Supernote. I could go for any reading library that I wanted here as well. I can also go ahead and download my book straight onto the device here from the internet, which is a great use, I think. And although it does have a limited web, web browser on here, you couldn't log into something and you can't really search to get around as easily as you can on the Tab Mini C. It's an open Android system, meaning you can really personalize and make this your own device. Whereas you are stuck in the use cases that Supernote have designed. They're very well designed use cases, of course, but you're stuck. Talking about the Notes app now, the Books Note app is absolutely extensive, but it's not always well thought through and it is not intuitive. The changes that they make to their note taking app, they are regular and they try their best to keep up with the feature set of all of their rivals. So when Supernote adds something or Remarkable adds something, it very quickly comes to the books platform. But sometimes those changes can be a little bit jarring. If you're used to working in a certain way and they change that, then it can be quite off-putting. Whereas the Supernote is just a really well thought out note-taking app with just the right amount of features and just the right amount of options. And people really love the way that you can make your own contents page here. And so here the intention is, as I use this device, I will be making links out to other important documents here from this contents page which is essentially going to be the home page of the device for me that I can quickly get back to from a single swipe down on this sidebar. It's great. I've just found that you can't seem to link to drawings though which is a bit of a disappointment. Now as for drawing you can draw really quite well here on the books note taking app. They've got a new pencil has both pressure and tilt support. That's excellent. So you can make some really nice drawings here. I've got lots of content about drawing on it here. And they've added a whole new drawing app here on the Supernote, which I have to say is excellent. It doesn't have tilt support, but apart from that, it's fabulous. That's what I wanted to see companies bring, a dedicated drawing app 
which has dedicated drawing tools is fabulous. And I cannot wait to see that on a full-size A4 tablet. Books, however, wins for working with typed text. The experience of typing on a Supernote is slow. And so you would need to be a really confident typist to keep a good speed up. Whereas with the fast screen mode options, and you don't have any screen mode options on the A6X2, with the faster screen mode options, you can type here and the text appears as you hit the key. You can also type into any word processing app of your choice, which for me is an absolute no brainer for working with type text to be working straight into the cloud version of that file. Both do handwriting recognition really well. But the Supernote I think has the edge on that with the way that they've implemented this automatic handwriting recognition or I think they call it real time and the nice thing about that is it's doing it in the background it's done quite well I didn't get handwriting though so I'll just go there and see why they wouldn't have got that and just print it a bit more neatly and it's recognized however on the books device you do have handwriting recognition in the notes app and it is just as accurate but I'd say the way to use the handwriting recognition is actually not to use the notes app to do that and then copy that and paste that elsewhere but just to use the handwriting recognition which is built into the on-screen keyboard because that's really quite good you have that option here on the super note as well so i think it's just slightly edging it in terms of if you want to write with the handwriting recognition for the super note let's talk about the two companies now and let's not forget that this is only the fifth device that super note have actually launched and as they did that they were making statements about this device will not make their previous devices obsolete they made sure to let everyone who's invested in the previous generation know that they're still gonna bring those same software experiences to their older devices. They even gave a 50% discount to users of their very first generation devices because they felt that they'd been unable to bring the number of software changes to that older Linux operating system that they had planned. So Supernote are a company that develops both their software and their hardware in the open with the collaboration of their customers. Books, however, they released nine devices in the last year, even superseding a device which had only been available for six months. There's a choice to be made about sustainability, modularity, and long-term value. Or if you want to enjoy tech in the way that it's generally been consumed until now with new releases at a very high pace and that makes you constantly lust after the latest and greatest, even though the device that you only have had for half a year is still working perfectly. That's your choice. What do you want to invest in? Books do support their devices with updates for up to three years, but Supernote are aiming for longer than that. They're looking at you using a device for a decade. Now, honestly, I think that there's enough differences here for you to find a place in your life for both of these devices. <laughs> of course, if money was no object, but perhaps a better bet would be to invest in one company at a large size and the other at a smaller size. Decide if you want to use apps on a larger screen or apps on a smaller screen or if you want a notebook replacement at a large size or a smaller size, decide which is going to be the ideal combo for you. I'm personally, I'm probably a big books and a little super note sort of guy, especially as this little A6X2 Nomad Edition does give me wanderlust. Because yes, if you're wondering, e ink is that good. I'm also someone that focuses in on using devices for work and this is not really going to be the best reader for pleasure. There's no front lights, for instance. So I had a discussion with Ed from Organizing for Change about 12 things that you can actually do which give you superpowers at work. These are 12 advanced features of the Supernote that are really geared towards your professional workflows. Stop by and let me know if any of them really speak to you. And I had people when we covered this telling us about 11 of these 12 things were things that they were gonna put in place right away and that was gonna really help them. Let's fire in then. So number one is with you and it's talking about using external web links in notes and uh, agendas. Okay. One thing that I think is really important is that although this is a very rudimentary web browser and there have been a lot of videos on that, uh, this is more of a, a behind the scenes browser. But like here, I've created a very simple Google link. It'll take you out to Google, but you can actually then search and even though it is very light, your keyboard comes up. And then one thing I always like to use is Avengers as a, as a, as just kind of a test. It recognizes right there. You hit your little search icon and then it will let you navigate the web. 
So one thing that's really nice here is that I do this to link to my Google Docs. So if I'm in a meeting, I download a PDF of that agenda, and that way I can add in comments and highlights and take notes on the PDF. But at the top, I make a hyperlink that takes me to the live version of that same document. You can't edit. That's one thing that the Supernote can't do with this limited browser, but you can see the live version. Uh, if I want to show a sheet, if I want to show a Google Doc, if I want to show other metrics, I can link out and this becomes kind of a way for me to leave my computer in my bag and show what a Google Sheet might look like. Yeah, so you can log it. The browser is limited, but you can actually log into uh, Google and it will remember you and you can go to your Google Drive links, etc. You can. And I believe, and, and the problem is, I guess, the limitation, not the problem, is mm -hmm. that you have to put in that exact link and then it'll prompt you to sign in. There's no way to navigate to a specific, you know, there's no address bar up here. No. So you can't live real time move around, but you can go to your drive and then click through it and it, yeah. it works fairly well. And you can follow the links that are on the screen there. But Exactly. And then exiting out is really easy. I think that's really like, um, you know, it comes back to, I don't know if you've spotted me, but going from content, I like this. I'm going to add, I guess, in my reviews home, I'll add a link to this thing I'm just making here the 12 superpowers you know it's all about thinking on your little route around the device how what are you going to go back to what are you going to um you know link to at any given time so this should be in the new notes here 12 superpowers notes there mm -hmm. and now i'll be able to quickly go between this link and this link and just sort of thinking about your own sort of what you need to get back to quickly etc i want to talk about like making your own pdf templates is my second one this is what I've been doing ever since uh, the beginning of my time with with the ink um, is making my own templates. So if I go back out of here, and I go to my spring 2023 planner. This is the one that I will be using um, when I'm at school. I'm sort of you can see me. I've sort of got this to half ready to be used as my daily driver. But this it was once a word document and now it's a note file in here. It's gone from being a word file and then saved as a PDF and then saved into in the files section. It's been saved in the my style here. Uh, you can see it's Ren Planner. That's that's the PDF there. Um, and you can just annotate on PDF. This is what I have been doing. But I find that then you, you lack sort of some of the I don't think you can do yeah, you don't have all of the table of contents. You can't change the table of contents of a PDF, which is a PDF, but you can have that, all that control within the notes thing. And you can just make this PDF the background to your notes file. So what I've then done, if I go back to my contents page, I'll go back to my, in this contents page here is the thing you can't edit on an actual PDF. Back to my school planner here. And in here I can go, Templates in here, and as long as I, as long as the the thing exists already, as long as I'm not making a brand new uh, workbook, then I will find my multiple page planner PDF here, and I can select what pages I can select all of them, or I can select certain pages. So if I just want to add my school days next week, I can select multiple pages, and then I can apply and add that as a template, and that puts the PDF as the template background with the links all still there, the links all still working, and I can also edit those links, and I can also add my own links essentially as well, importantly as well. So now I apply, it adds that as a template, there it all is, and now I can still make new links. Uh, so select, and I've got all that control that I do in a notebook. I can still add my star marks, if I can draw a star. Yes, got it this time. And so I still get all of that really well thought out Supernote functionality there. 
within that. I mean, I think that's going to be great. I think that's going to be absolutely fabulous when I use this. When I use this as my daily driver at work, I'm really, really looking forward to that functionality there. So you have your personalized, your planner that you've made yourself. Of course, you could buy one straight off the shelf. Voyage My Daily Organizer is great. I know you've got a lot of content on that ad as well. And then you can edit that. You can edit all the things in that. And I know that's the home for this. Um, that is really the, the home for My Daily Organizer, I think. And that's where this is really starting to take off again. And really, I, I think the platform is moving ahead of, certainly for the notes taking app, certainly that's moving ahead of a lot of the competition at this point. I, w- I would just say one other thing real quick on that as yeah, far as there's a very uh, and one thing I have talked about is are the planners and I think they're really important one thing that you lose is the contrast control and the, avil- the ability to add in like actual notes or comments directly into the PDF if you turn it into a template but what you gain is so much more like you just showed so mm-hmm. it's it's really a trade off. It depends on whether you are someone who is more driven by the planner itself and need it to be in that hyperlink mode and you're mm-hmm. used to pen and paper, or whether you really want to maximize the use of the super note, which gives you all those extra tools that you can use on the note taking side. So that's it's it. it's really an interesting um, back and forth. And I think that's what you're going to really come on to next is one thing you said to me was yes, using your own PDF as a planner is great, but actually using the calendar as a productivity tool is what you're going to talk about next. I think, I think that what's interesting about the calendar, be careful here. I don't want everyone to think that the calendar is the end all be all. Um, I think that this is one of the things though, that separates the super note from something like the remarkable and even from the books line. And one of the reasons I chose it was because while it syncs with your Google calendar or your outlook calendar, it's not a full on office app or a suite to where mm-hmm. you're having to go through outlook to do things, but it allows you to do a lot of the same functions that some of the planners do. And I think Supernote is really close to making this a fully functional tool that will be able to integrate and, again, keep that laptop off your desk or out of the conference room. So for me, and I use this, it is tied to my work calendar, so I try to make sure that I don't show anything uh, going on at work. But you'll see that I created a note today, and down Mm -hmm. here you have access to any note you created and it pops right up. You can go in, you can open that note, you can edit that note. Um, as a matter of fact, it'll be the, the same note we just created with the Google link. So that's right at your fingertips. You also, when you go back out, you're still at the calendar. And what's unique about this is you can also write on that calendar. Now, let's see if this works. I tried it earlier. Yep. And you still have your lasso erase so your eraser if you have your gesture eraser on still works regardless so Mm -hmm. these are the incidental things and i do an in-depth video on this so i'm not going to belabor it and go through all of the things i use it for but being able to use the daily view the Mm -hmm. monthly view or the weekly view the daily view which is this one and the monthly view that shows you your events and being able to create events either by touching the screen or touching the plus, the navigation is extremely well thought out. Can you handwrite on this view and the weekly as well? No, that's the biggest limitation. You can right. handwrite on the weekly and the monthly. Right. But not so you can, you can transfer that really easily. But what you can't do is mm. handwrite on the daily. Right. And they really, I think, are missing the boat on that because I think yeah. that's where it could be really useful to hand write in a meeting and then go back later and add it to my Google calendar because I can already already see if there are conflicts. I would say, yes, yeah, so if you add the event, it, it does link with your Google calendar, doesn't it? It does. And if you go here, you see these dots. Yeah. Those are showing me that there's an event on that day. And if I click on that, it it's going to show in this little box here at the bottom. And you can create a new note from either of those top views right in real time. So for a lot of cases, I don't even leave this view. I don't even go into my navigation 
unless I'm going to go over to the quick navigation bar mm -hmm. and go into a large folder, which this has been a little buggy since the update this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so my navigation's backed up on me. But the idea is I can stay in this view and mm -hmm. any notes that I have are right there that were created yeah. that day. I keep telling them, give me today and last accessed and I'll be a, a happy yeah. person. But we haven't got there yet. But it, it does. It gives you that functionality. It's really interesting. One of the things of my last live stream talking about this was I was talking about it isn't really a homepage as such on Supernote. You know, it's not like an apps homepage or a notes homepage that we're kind of used to. There isn't really a homepage. And actually, if your calendar is your homepage, you know, you're talking about, exactly. okay, I, I'm talking about having a contents note. And that's actually um, the next one that I'm going to do and you know this this sort of quick access you know you go back to last open uh, document last open kind of note there as well this is my next superpower is having this sort of contents page making this contents page and treating it like a contents of your whole device page it's like making your own home page if you like and you see that people share these on reddit and they share all you know here's my latest sort of contents page my latest home page and it's it's like really makes the whole thing feel very customizable doesn't it i think i've kind of shown that quite a lot um as well but i'll just do one more bit of that then um so my contents page here what i'm doing as i say is i'm getting this sort of ready to be used as my daily driver at work so what, what i'm doing is making sure i've got the, the documents that i need so i've got here's my a-level documents on here and I can I've link out to this PDF and uh, you know now I've got this is a this is a full PDF so I've got its sort of table of contents in there so I can go back and forwards to that I can go back to my last open note and most of the time will be my contents page here so I'll just show you how I make that so on the nomad you've got two two swipe bars um, I, I guess you will on the A5X2 as well. So you've seen, um, just to make that really clear, that if you two finger on the bar at this point, you get the eraser. Um, but if you two finger on the screen, you get a select lasso now. And I think you can change that. But let's say I want to link to this specification document here. I select it like so, and I've got the link key there. Hit the link button. Uh, it's an other file. It's going to be, it's going to be in documents and then a level physics because it's an a level physics specification and then boom make that link and now it's there open that and now i'm into my pdf for my specification my quick uh, reference of the things that i need to teach them and when all the little objectives that i need to teach the young people tomorrow etc so i think that's a really powerful one but that's really interesting and, and actually this caters then for different types of of uh, workflows are you someone who is it you know your your planning and your daily kind of actions are, are more the driver of what you want to do or is it a place where you just need to be able to get around the device around your notes around your different files quickly and easily you know all both or some mix of both isn't that a, a superpower? And your next one, PDF comments and annotations. So let's take us through that if you can. Right. So one thing that I, I think is really interesting with this, and I've done a, a deeper dive into this on, on some of my videos, but one thing that's kind of unique to the Supernote, and it's fairly new, and, and Kit, I don't know how much you've used this. I'd be interested to hear. But when you're in the PDF, and this is a function you lose again when we were talking about going from the PDF planner to the mm. to using it as a template. Is mm. this idea of highlighting then being able to go in and add actual comments? So the comments are you go ahead and you go into the comment, and this brings up your you can either type in or you can handwrite, and this comment turns into text. So it hand rec it handwrite recognitions it. And it gets embedded when you export into the PDF. So the example I give is I've used this for interview questions. So during a, an interview, mm. I'll sit down and I'll ask the question. And as they're giving me their response, I'm handwriting in this section down here. And then it is going to go ahead and recognize up here. When I hit save and when I export that, I can now... I don't use that often um, yet, and this is one of the things that I'm just really excited to dive in and really use this device as my full time at work because I'm really starting to see its use case. You know, alongside we talked about 
how it sits next door to a laptop and how it complements your laptop doesn't take over from it or how as you're pointing out now it can really replace your laptop in a meeting as you've just um, come in here I can see that as being a really powerful thing lots of it I'm sparking lots of like use cases for myself for this <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a bad example of hand of uh, recognition just then <laughs> but and, and you do have sometimes have to to clean it up. But for mm -hmm. the most part, as we saw when I just wrote in interesting, uh, it comes through pretty clear. But then you have these, and I preset this so that during the meeting, again, I don't have to take the time to, to highlight and then to come mm -hmm. back and then to highlight again and go mm -hmm. back in. I just tap, comment, and I go from there. So it's a, it's a very productive tool and it keeps me from having to once again break up that conversation flow. Mm -hmm. That, that's always the part. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let me go back in here. Let me do this instead of asking the important questions and taking the time to listen for the response. Yeah. I'll be interested, Kit, with what you, as you, as you drive this, yeah. I've been doing this for two and a half years with this one device. So I'm very familiar with what it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't get, I don't get to live a di digital minimalist life, unfortunately, because, um, I, 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 you know, that, that old boohoo kit, like you, you do get to review these amazing devices. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm constantly trying out new things. So, you know, actually, and my first review of this, and when I, you know, I did return to it about a year ago now, actually, and I sort of did another daily drive after some updates. Um, but even then, it's moved on quite quickly, I can see since then. And, um, yeah, I'm going to have to really dive in deeper. And I'm really excited to find out that this is a very, very useful conversation. I hope you guys are finding it useful as well there's some really great bits of chat here so my next one then um as i go back now to our 12 superpowers and number six is going to be making making a detailed table of contents yeah and i think this is more about just being in the habit of making and keeping a table of contents so if i just show you what that looks like in a document that i've been trying to make sure that i do not only can you get about this document and the whole device by links, but you can also keep your own personal table of contents. And this has been for me the absolute selling point. The, these sort of three options here along the top here of super notes, the thing that I sort of love about it. First of all, you can make yourself a heading. So if I make a new page, let's just go to the end of it, I can make myself a new heading at any time by selecting the text. I'm going to try and make sure I grab it all. And the big H, you get different styles of headings, which I think categorize them differently, and they certainly look different on the page. Let's try a different, different one again. And then I've got new heading here. So that will take me between any of my headings at any time, which is just really very useful. Then I can also use keywords. And if I just show you, I look through some of the keywords I have on the thing here. So I already have a-level GCSE in school. So any page where I'm going to be discussing A-level, then that I can select that. Again, I'll do it on my sort of example page, my new heading page. If I type in A-level again, and I select it, make sure I select it all. And I go keyword, it will recognize that. Oh, it's A-level, look. And I can just add it to that. And now when I now look at keywords A-level, you see I've got it in multiple places across the document as well. I mean, that is just such a quick way to sort of tag up and make sure you can get to things. You know, if you, if you talk about individual employees or, you know, tasks or projects, you can tag them up and you can go quickly to those pages where you're working on those. It's a real, real superpower. And then lastly, it's star marks. And I said at the top, I said, treat star marks as your to-do list. And this is the thing, you know, I didn't realize this, that's my wife, when she got her A6X, um, she said, oh, I can see how I'm going to use that because that's going to be my, my tasks. So when I have a, a new task, no matter where I am in my document, if I go ahead and put a little star, and that just leaves that as something that I can quickly go back to. Oh, there it is. Go to that page and it turns up. And once you've done it, you can just, uh, you can select it and delete it, or you can just delete it. And that is now gone from your mind because isn't it great to clear out your tasks and have an empty to-do list? To-do list, so that is, uh, you know, the use of that. But Remarkable have added checkboxes. 
and they are just boxes that can be ticked or unticked and they cross out the little bit of text that's next to it that's that's as much as they've done there it can't you can't find them all you know you can't centrally on the device like you can on the super note so whenever you are you can get back quickly to those star marks and find your list of to do's um really really super quickly i think that's that's a fabulous thing crack on with your next one which is the global search ed but if you could swipe down from the the top you'll be able to so if you exit out of the quick access and swipe down over oh, the very top well the whole thing's you'll gone. see so the you'll... search tool yep. and the nice thing about this and i love the keyword example and the star mark example mm-hmm. kit that again shows the versatility so mm-hmm. for someone who focuses that way it's the best way for them to approach this for mm-hmm. someone like me who's using something else for that but needs to find an, a specific word or phrase if you type in anything into that search bar and it will it will crawl all of your real time recognition notes right. so anything that you have done in multiple notes should when you hit search pull up and identify in those different notebooks it's a really interesting tool yeah and let's see how quick that is because that's a lot of searching no results but just try screen on its own and i use those again extensively which is screen server design notes yeah or let's try there we are yeah so look yeah if i type in pen which is nice now because i can apparently go to my this is the atelier document where i was testing out all of the different pen tools so yeah that's great this searching through Real-time recognition notes. We didn't search all the PDFs as well, I, I take it, just your real-time recognition notes. It will notes. search titles and real-time recognition notes. So it, it's it, it's pretty pretty functional. Right. Um, I'm going to fire in for the next one then. So the next one is the screen share function. So I'm going to yeah show you first of all how to get that. So again, it's from the swipe down here. It looks like a screen share icon here. Click that. It says go to this URL. And that's a URL that I have bookmarked. Yeah, there we are. So one of my bookmarks up here is that address, which is 192.168. You know, it's just a local sort of LAN address. And there it is. And now you can see with a handy little pointer, you can see my screen. How quick is that? Yeah, it's pretty much real time, isn't it? Yeah, it's very good. That is really quite useful for showing your way around. I wonder, does Kindle come through in color even on that? And just being able to share out to a meeting. You could obviously f- full screen that. Yeah, you could share that out. No, it stays in black and white, which is absolutely acceptable, isn't it? Absolutely fine. And then you can just quickly stop sharing. So the, the things you need to have right on that is they need the, the device and the browser that you're sharing to. And it can just be any browser at all. It has to be on the same Wi-Fi. It has to be on the same network, essentially, is the, is the, the thing that you need to have right there. As long as that's the case, it is that simple. There's, there's no software to in- install. There's no issues with like trying to find, you know, the right app to share with your board because it only <laughs> shares to this proprietary app. For instance, there's no Miracast. Does it have Miracast or not? It's just, can you share a window to a meeting, for instance? So a lot of the time now, now that we use Zoom and Teams and all these things and StreamYard to search there, and then screen share or window share, you could just share that one window, of course. Um, and have that up in your meeting and very quickly be sharing your notes or sharing your handwriting, drawing diagrams to the meeting as well. So I think that is definitely, it's the simplest of the screen share um, functions. So I'll put screen share by HTTP. And I think, Kit, to your point, being able to use those other ways to share your own screen then makes that very very versatile. You're you're not relying on someone having another app. They can just log in however they come. That's really important. As as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi, because that's the one thing you are relying on is that you can log on to the Wi-Fi in the in a space that you're presenting. Maybe you know that's that's the thing which you know won't always always work. But I think that is the least likely to go wrong in any kind of situation as long as you can log onto the same Wi-Fi that is going to work pretty smoothly. Number nine this is commenting on PDF as well but this is for marking documents is that how you would explain this one? Yeah I've been using the Supernote for quite a while to grade. What I do and one reason that this has been really helpful for teaching and I know Kit you're a teacher so mm. you know for for me one of the big draws to this is I like to hand mark up papers so yeah. I like to write comments in the margins 
I like to do a lot of things like that that gives it that more personal touch. The problem is that that then becomes not accessible to screen readers and some other technologies that you really need to have in the modern age for people who may be site challenged or whatever the issues are. But with that PDF functionality or that highlighting functionality, you can go ahead and highlight that text. And instead of using that annotation file where you're handwriting, you can add your comment right here. Now what that does, it still allows me to mark in the margin, still, still allows me to underline or to circle words. Mm. And so there's going to be some extra content that's there, but there's also this embedded content where I can explain what may be wrong with a specific sentence. So whether this was, you know, grammar, which it may not recognize that one. Actually, it did. It got me mm. right there. The idea being that you can mix the digital and the distraction. I hate the term distraction-free because it's gotten a little changed. I think your digital minimalism kind of makes more sense. Yeah, I like the way we're talking about it. Very much focused on the grading here and not looking at everything else. These devices are focused on the job in hand. They're not focused on grabbing your attention because attention is money. That's the thing about this the argument that comes through repeatedly in this digital minimalism book, which I vastly recommend to you all, and thanks for the recommendation from you guys for it. The companies that make apps and make smartphones, etc., they they are the, the, your attention is money to them. You know, your attention is the ability to advertise to you, is to sell to you. Your attention is money, and I do hope that we're giving you some excellent value. Please let us know if you are. You don't have to click like, but if we are, then join in the conversation. Get covered up now. So mine now is using the digest feature, and the digest feature is simply a way of saying where do your annotations go from your readings. So again, swipe down to, to get to everything. That's the way to go, and you go to your digest, and you can see a couple of things. These are the two uh, bits of reading that I've done on here and have made cut notes on or annotations on or highlights. So we've got two for each. Uh, this is the manual here. I have highlighted a little bit, which I'll just show you now how to do. And also you can add a handwritten note, or of course you can add a text note in here as well. So it's just a good way to get back to the things that you need to be like really front of mind. So let's see how you do that. So let's go back through my contents, go to my school home, and I'll do something that I'm gonna, you know, I'm teaching at the minute with my year 12. Go to the, con the contents there, and I need to find SPC topic. We're doing technology in space. It's all very, very exciting. How um, we're teaching electricity, but in the content context of satellites and satellite technology. So really, really good. So I can go to my teacher notes here, and I can look for the activities that I'm up to. You know, I'm just really looking forward to using this uh, and later the A5X2 as well when it comes. And let's say there's a little bit in here that I need to think, okay, that students might already be familiar with combining resistance series and parallel. I need to think about this. This is giving me a little tip here of what I need to make sure that my students are very familiar with and they understand before I start teaching them the new stuff. And now that's there as a note that I can select and add a note to. You know, I could even hit in here if I wanted to, I could draw myself a couple of questions that I wanted to ask them if I wanted to be really wizzo. I can add in notes here, you know, don't forget to tell them this or, and then that is now in my digest. There it is. Useful, right? So just a really nice way of making your, your device something you're reading on, you're making notes with, um, and then they're always thinking up clever ways of, of making it quick to get back and quick to scan around, and quick to find the things that um, you are looking for. I think it's really, really super useful. Is that something you use, uh, Ed? It is. I, I One thing that I think would be even uh, better for it, I, I use it a little bit, but I've gotten, I've now gotten into the, the comments <laughs> because I like that they stay embedded with the PDF and it's mm. a little bit easier. I used annotations quite a bit before that. Uh, now that they've kind of combined them in that pen tool at the top, Kit, you don't have to draw the brackets. I like that they right. left that functionality in there. 
but you okay, can actually sure. choose whether you want the comment or the annotation and it really works well i hope at some point they integrate them so, so when this pen here so that's when it your... pops up yep ah so i've got the yeah, leave a comment so leave a comment is this one Make yep. a note. And then the annotation yeah. is right next to it. So it's, you know, they keep to refine, they keep refining that experience so that it's easy for you in the moment to figure out what you want to do. But having both of those in one place. If you're thinking of buying one of these, then really think about, do you want to, do, do you want to be part of the community that you're seeing in the chat and, you know, folks like this and Supernote are responding to, it's very easy from the settings to send feedback to them. They do. And if they've got capacity, they will add it. If they think they can do it in a way that is in keeping with the theme and the aims of the device, they will bring it. And, and that's great. Rather than, you know, having this open Android system where there's millions of apps, <laughs> quality of those, you know, finding the quality one that's going to do everything that you want it to do is a minefield, frankly. And when you download your new free app that you want to try and you have to live with, if trying to grab your attention to sell you things through adverts, then you just nothing like that on this and, and that's what they're talking about in the digital minimalism minimalism it's like you know when you read a really good book and you know, everything is about is about that book for the next few, few weeks you know that's where i'm at right now with this couldn't recommend it more number 11 now which is handwriting kindle notes so this one's kind of just it's both a personal and professional aha moment and a mm. kid i told you this that it was something that i don't know why it never occurred to me until the mm. other day my frustration with kindle has always been having to type in with the on-screen keyboard any comments or notes i want to make in the Kindle app. It's slow, it's sluggish, even in the old days of the tactile keyboard, it was just not easy. But here, and hopefully this will show, one thing about the Super Note that's really interesting that I just recently is that the keyboard is global, and I thought it was relying on the Kindle keyboard inside the app. And it's not. For my notes now, you know, we're reading Henry V in class for the class I'm teaching right now. I can go into my copy and I can put interesting point. Mm. Of course, my handwriting here is atrocious, but it still picked it up. So it worked well. And then I can hit save. That is much faster for me than trying to do that with the typewritten keyboard or with the virtual keyboard. Now, I think once they get the app working with the desktop version, it may even be faster uh, that you would be able to do that. But mm. for me, that's a time saver, especially for those of us who may be older Kindle users and remember the buttons when they came out and then remember the the virtual keyboard. It's just a quick way to add that note in and have it handwrite or hand recognize your handwriting right there. So that's just a, that's a fun one to me. Cool. Excellent. Handwriting keynotes. Now the 12th one, it was going to be keyboard linking. And I think you were down to do this one as well, but it's with the new desktop app. And we've talked about, is the desktop app ready to show? Do you, do you mind just giving us a real quick, can you show your, show your screen and show you how you do the yeah. app? Show us how that works in the desktop app and on the Supernote. You need to go to Supernote. And if you search for Supernote Partner Windows Desktop App, something like that you'll be able to find that and install it it's still in beta itself the thing is uh, uh, um, I'll talk about this now I, I tried it today um, and it probably means that uh, Google Drive is a little bit kind of redundant for me in a way because what you can't do on the Google Drive you've, if you use that as syncing is that you can't read the notes so you can't read you can read the PDFs can sync up to Google Drive and the docs and docx and uh, any PNGs or JPEGs or whatever you have on the device. All of that type of, um, you know, all, the, all of the global sort of file formats can be read in Google Drive. But you can't read the notes unless you're on a Supernote device or now uh, unless you're on the uh, desktop app. So I'm thinking to myself, right, do I, I was really kind of keen on the idea that I could use Google Drive, but now I'm kind of thinking to myself, no, I, I think I'll, I'll go back to the Supernote cloud so that I can interact with the partner app and, and, and read the notes and interact with them in real time as well. But what I also think is actually it's very easy to switch between them. So if you go into the settings, 
there's the whole sync menu in here and you can actually very quickly and easily it seems switch between the synchronization platforms that you have how does the, the sync work it work it works on demand which is a bit odd it doesn't do it automatic all the time which i think is probably better for battery life but it is more you know you you have to manually tap the sync button to actually sync it i don't know if you can schedule synchronizations at some time but actually it's very easy to switch between the supernote cloud so let's say you wanted to do a google drive backup or you want or you had a document in your google drive that you wanted to bring down onto your supernote and you just basically in your google drive you have a folder called supernote and that the folder structure within that just mimics exactly the file structure in here it makes a supernote folder in Google Drive with this file structure and everything is synced, the PDFs, everything. The notes files are there, you just can't open them, so it is a backup. But then what you could do now is you could go ahead, you could just think to yourself, well, I wanna make a backup in my Google Drive, so I'll just click on there, do a sync, that backs up everything from the Google Drive, brings everything that's in that folder down to the device. And, and then most of the time you live in the Supernote cloud and you can have your notes there that you can access in the partner mobile app. You can access them on the web app and you can access them now on the desktop app. So that's quite, you know, it's okay. Actually, I, I did think, oh, uh, you've got to choose one or the other. And now I'm thinking, no, do I really need to choose one or the other? I'm not entirely sure. So when I go in, you'll see here at the bottom, it's got this EN and it's got kind of this blank space. That's telling me that the keyboard is paired with right. the device and then I can go here and I can disable that. Okay, yeah. so now I can go ahead and hit enter. One of the bugs, just to be real transparent, is the shift key mm -hmm. doesn't work to capitalize. So okay. I can hit caps and I can do Y. Mm. You know, you're looking at a five demo. <laughs> so it works pretty quick. I mean, it's not as fast is some of the uh, the other things that I've seen, but it mm -hmm. does work. And this is in a Word document, which is what sets it apart a little bit. Pretty much any other device that's not using the native Outlook app. So like on Remarkable, that's a proprietary file. Mm -hmm. This is Word. So when you hit save and you open this document somewhere else, it will look exactly like this. So the first thing you have to do, let's go out. So you have all of your files here, but when mm -hmm. you go into settings, and then you go to Supernote linking. Right. Now, if you're on a work network, there are a lot of admin permissions here. So I'll just warn you that mm. it's better to do this at home for now, just to test it. But then your device will show up here. And when you click that, it'll give you a pair code that'll actually yep. show on your device. And you hit pairing and it tells you it's now paired. Over here on the right is where you enable the keyboard sharing. And you can turn that on and off, but your device will stay linked as long mm -hmm. as, as you're doing anything with the app. So as long as you've paired it, the syncing between the device and the desktop app will be pretty much simultaneous. You do get some conflict files because of the cloud being in that three-way connection, uh, but they're mm -hmm. working through that. Again, it's a very much... A, a beta and it's uh yeah it's a, you can see the use of it once it's maybe quicker and just slicker and that you you don't have to you have so you have to have that window open and maximized uh, you have to have that screen maximized to be able to type so it's not going to be that kind of quick i'm working on my computer and i want to type something in so you know like a couple of keystrokes and you're typing on your super note it won't be that quick uh, hopefully yet hopefully they'll get that there that's our 12 superpowers i think we've hopefully that does really become a superpower should i put a little little, little <laughs> asterisk by that one or a, a little uh, little star mark should i make a star mark for it to, for them yeah. to uh, I, I think they're well on their way kid i really yeah. do i think what's interesting is i put an image in there and i kind of showed some stills of this when it was beta within a beta <laughs> right. which is always dangerous. And if you put a, an object in Word, it comes over in the, into the super node and is selectable. Mm. Now, you can't resize it yet, but since it creates a bounding box, I'm pretty sure that's a new feature that's coming. Mm. So that would kind of change the way you would use that workflow if you could bring smart art or some kind mm. of uh, bounding boxes into that and maybe even a, a hat tip towards word 
So where does this particular device fit and where is all of Supernote going? This device they've called the A6, that refers to the size, it's about an A6 sheet of paper. X2, and X2 refers to us the second generation, it's after the X, which is the Android based ecosystem. And they've called it the Nomad, which indicates that it's geared towards travelers. And that's because of the size. One thing I think I did say is that perhaps having the blue one would be better for traveling than this one. But I wonder then, what will the A5 double this size essentially, and the A4 double that size? What will the taglines be for those devices? Again, <laughs> let me know if you've got any good ideas of what they should call them. But what we can be certain about is they're going to be great companions for your bigger productivity machines. And they're going to be great places to do some really focused work, some really focused writing, especially on those two larger devices. Without realizing it until now, I've been searching for the digital analog and it's led me here and I couldn't be happier. Let me put this into a bit of context. Now hear me out. I'm an okay photographer and all I really like to do is to take photos of my little family and I have some good results. But the way I was taking photos five years ago was just to simply rely on the amazing autofocus that's in modern cameras. I'd whack on some fast glass and I'd spray and pray. Sure, I'd get like five amazing photos, but I'd have a memory card full of like 500 to sift through to find those few shots. And unfortunately that meant that usually I would copy those photos onto my hard drive and then not do much with them for some time. I wanted something to slow me down, so I decided to go back to film and it worked. So this is the Canon A1. It made me much more selective over when I was taking photos. It made me think about where I was taking photos and what the light was like and what was in the frame and what was out of the frame. It slowed me down and it made me more intentional. And then when I went back to the digital tools, I was far more purposeful. I take fewer photos now, but my hit rate is far higher. And the funny thing is that this digital camera that I bought like six years ago, I'm about to sell it and I'll probably get about 80% of what I actually paid for it new in 2017. And largely that is because it has this kind of old school styling. It has this kind of retro or analog styling. I'm not the only one looking for a digital analog in 2024. Have a little look at the Fujifilm X100V. Its secondhand copies of that are now selling for more than the original list price was. This is the power of the digital analog right now. This is the Supernote Nomad. Love this camera. <laughs> Just such a pleasure to use my other cameras in R5. But I read a YouTube title this morning and it was something like how to stand out with AI. And that's pretty close to an oxymoron. If we all just parrot what the robots write for us and shout that into a void, then there'll quickly be a vacuum for something human, something textured, something authentic. I am a teacher and I'm also a paying customer to ChatGTP4. I use it loads to create very quick very high quality tasks for my lesson. That's work that takes a great deal of time and which frankly the robot does better than I could in less time. But you wouldn't want that from this content. You would switch off very quickly if this review was written by AI. And more to the point, I would not want to create these videos by AI. The creative bit of teaching is how you sculpt the lesson and how you apply the resources in your classroom to engage those students and help them to make progress. And for writing poems and for drawing, it's the act of writing and the act of drawing. Struggling to control the mess of marks on the page to make it represent something and be pleasing to look at. That's where the art is. And in looking at it, you imagine being the human making the marks, or at least you admire the skill it took to bring that thing into being from the blank page. And so it is for poetry. And this is the place to do it. To bring that messy world of the idea the feeling you have in your head and to order it in words and sounds and images on the page to give that text meaning. And these are my thoughts after two weeks of using it at work, although I must say that this is becoming the most unreview review of any product that I've ever made. But look, I've got a lot of content featuring this product and all the details are in there. But just let me show you how I'm using it at work now and why it's becoming totally invaluable. It all starts from a contents page, which I can access from a swipe down on this quick access bar on the side here. And in that, I have a link to a page for all of my important areas. And in that, I have links to all of my important files. For instance, this is the teaching notes that I need for teaching my A-level course. And I can work on it, I can annotate it. This is the topic that I'm up to right now. And I can quickly find parts of the course and access them to reference in my lessons. 
for instance, the answer sheets. And then I've also made a planner notebook, which again, I've got in the quick access bar here. The template for which is actually a PDF with all of my two week timetable, with all of my lessons already labeled up. And I just need to annotate in them what I'm doing for each lesson. And every two weeks, I can just add another two weeks worth of the PDF template. And because it's a notebook rather than a PDF, I can still use all of the awesome headings, keywords, and stars functions. So the start of the next school fortnight will be the 4th of March, select that and turn that into a heading. And there it is, I can skip back to my fortnights just like that. And I can also highlight keywords, have them recognized and skip to wherever they appear in the book and star marks for my to-do list. And as soon as I delete that star mark, it's gone from that list. It's simple, but it's elegant. And it's a workflow which I've gone straight into. And honestly, I'm not sure that I want to switch out of it anytime soon. It's really appealing to the intentional tech ideas that I'm embracing since reading Digital Minimalism. And yeah, it's great. Two things to say though, I do wonder if it's a little bit small. And because of that, finger presses aren't always as accurate. You might have seen me miss once or twice. And if you find that, you can just use the pen and you'll be much more accurate every time. And I suppose I just wonder whether I'm going to love the A5X2 more. I think that I probably will. I've always sort of felt that the A6 size was a little bit too small for me. And I have really loved when I've used the biggest A4 size, the ink tablets. But as far as the functionality of the Supernote goes, with those larger Supernote devices coming along, I can tell you they're going to be worth the wait. For now though, whenever this is a little bit small, you can just go ahead and rotate it and you should be fine with the size. And pinch to zoom does work, but it isn't perfectly integrated. To use their own taglines and, and to add a few of my own, it's elegant productivity for those who work. It's enticing stationery for those who write. And it's a digital sketchbook for those who draw. And also I'd say this one is a travel notepad for digital nomads. I think you're probably getting the idea that I'm pretty enthusiastic here for this product. It's a device that lets you do all your thinking, all your writing, all your drawing on this beautiful page and have it ready to go into our digital world of publication. That's what Rata Supernote have created here. It's getting me very excited to do the two things that I love to do the most. The two things that if you left me idle with nothing but free time, the two things that I would end up doing beyond anything, to draw and to write. And thank you Rata for understanding your audience so well and creating such a special product. I have absolutely loved using this at work and, and now I am gonna switch back to using a books device. And I do think objectively the books device is a better device because there is just more that you can do with it. And they are really nice to experience. And I'm going to also use a big me for reading and I'm gonna do some other evaluations as well. For me, I have to kind of put this to one side and start using those other devices to test them and bring you content based on my experience at work. But I feel currently like I'm going to miss this device quite a lot. Just the simplicity, just the things that my computer is not good at, it is good at. And I've got my computer for those things that it can't do. And I can tell you that it's a device which I could just keep using for the very long term. It is excellent. It feels like it's starting to grow into my second brain. It feels like I'm organizing my work on here, using those contents pages. I'm organizing my thoughts and my thinking and my notes on here. And this could become an absolute replacement for something like Notion or X-Tiles or anything like that, these knowledge management systems. The Supernote platform could become your knowledge management system. And that is an amazing thing for a company like Rata to have managed. It is the new high watermark for digital note-taking. And the other companies, you need to take note of this. The ball is in your court. It's simply an absolute joy to use.